This is Patrick from Tonic Breed, and you are listening to the Dan Chan Show. Hey, Patrick, how's things in Norway, or Oslo, Norway, my friend? Things are very well, my, my friend. Uh, it's uh, nice weather here, so uh, we're happy for all the sunny days we, we can get uh, here in, uh, in, in Oslo. Of course. <laughs> I mean, how hot does it get in Oslo in the summer? I mean, it's what, like 22, 3, 4? Is that tops? <laughs> if looking... and, well, we can, uh, we can look at 30 sometimes. 30? Or below 30, below 30. 30 wow. So wow. Early, but th- that's, that's the hottest day. So that's but, tropical. Uh, that's tropical. That that's the hottest days uh, this year. But we we are uh, yeah twenty two. That's uh, that's pretty much the average in a July month. Pretty good, pretty good. Right. So I wanted to get you on the show because we've been talking for a while now. So I thought it'd be cool to chat and let everyone hear what we're going to say. You know, I first came across you when you released your EP last year, Fuel the Fire. Then I delved deeper and found out they have many more releases. First off, can you tell me how the band started and, and where you came from, etc.? Because you used to be a full band and now you're doing it alone with some very cool guest appearances. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We uh, we started out uh, in 2006. That was wow. so when the the band was uh, first uh, established. Uh, and I was uh, 16 years old, and so was <laughs> all the other band members. Uh, had a dream of uh, uh, playing in a thrash metal band, and uh, yeah, but all we made wasn't really thrash metal at the time. We made uh, melodic stuff and and heavy metal, and yeah, it was a, a mix of everything actually. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, and uh, we, uh, we at the, at the, the entire span of the lifetime of uh, the lineup, we uh, have been uh, three uh, different uh, lineups. Uh, yeah. But uh, the first one uh, in 2006, we lasted about uh, three years and, and made a record, uh, uh, which we released in 2010. Yeah. Mm. Uh- and so what what happened with the band members and and, and what why why are you on your own now yeah so uh, after you know uh, been three different lineups and each lineup uh, we for each lineup we made uh, uh, a new release a new album or an ep so we uh, we we were going in the direction of uh, you know uh, getting a quite solid uh, portfolio of songs yeah uh, uh, but after each release, um, some of the band members decided they didn't want to play in a band anymore. So they uh-huh. had their reasons. It's yeah. uh, they they move someplace or they get kids and they wanted to prioritize uh, something else than music. Uh, and I uh, I have uh, respect for all their decisions and uh, no no uh, issues or arguments around uh, no. what happens. Uh, but sure. uh, after three times and you have to start over over and you 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 actually don't get get anywhere because you have to start over again every time I understand yeah uh, yeah. yeah so uh, after the third uh, what should you call it the breakup um <laughs> in yeah. two, 2019 uh, i was like fed up with uh, uh not having uh, the the right uh, people around me uh, yeah. and try, trying with not that motivated uh, band members so yeah. Uh, but I was motivated, so uh, in 2020, I decided to just do things my, uh, myself um, and uh, make music I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the story of how it went. It's, it's not no more than dramatic that, uh, than that I wanted to. Uh, was was, keep, was, keep COVID, was COVID a catalyst in that as well, being the time 2020? You know, probably like the music had stopped for a lot of people and you decided to, to do it yourself because you didn't have to rely on anyone? You know what? That's a great question because uh, the, the last split up was in 2019 in November. Uh, you know, a few months before COVID, yeah. uh, and my decisions, my de- 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 decision of uh, going uh, alone was made before then. Uh, yeah. So the timing was, uh, you know, of, I, I decided not to play live for a while uh, before COVID. So that timing was perfect for me, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, no, no, COVID was just, uh, 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 something that happened and had nothing to do with the split up. Right. So you're on your own, you got music ready to go and you decide to bring some guest appearances in. How did that all come about with these awesome, awesome guests? Did you know them before? Was, did you reach out to them? How did that all happen? Yeah. So that happened uh, along the way. Uh, I was, uh, 
kind of write music and um, my idea in the first place was just having people I know uh, play uh, the drums and uh, you know do the stuff I, I c- can't do uh, <laughs> to, to help me out yeah. uh, with the songs uh, but not as part of the band just as you know uh, some some guests uh, but uh, as I was uh, going along I uh, yeah I j- I wanted to uh, challenge myself and I wanted to do something I hadn't done before, uh, which I always tend to do. I try to do something new every time. And what I hadn't done yet was to cooperate with uh, people uh, that have uh, come much more further than me in the, in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that would be a challenge. And I would put some pressure on myself, uh, both uh, songwriting and uh, in, uh, in the the production and everything. Of course, because so, you, you've got to get, you yeah. write music, you're going to show it to these people, you want to get the, the thumbs up from them, don't you? I mean, yes, that, that's sure. the ultimate thing. And you've <laughs> got to tell, tell us who you got on, on the project. Yeah, so uh, the first one I got on the, the project was Oliver Palutai from uh, uh, Camelot. Yeah, yeah. He's actually a keyboard, keyboardist uh, or a synth guy, but he plays guitar. Uh, as I understand, he plays a lot of instruments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know he, he was playing guitar. So when I uh, find that out after uh, getting to know him a little bit, uh, I was like, hey, you want to play some <laughs> some guitar solos on, yeah. on my song? Yeah. And he said, yes, he, he liked the idea. He he, he was uh, up for a, a music video and everything. So uh, we, we figured things out and, and made the first single for, for my new uh, project or, yeah, my rebranding of Tony Green. Yeah, yeah. And what about Dirk? Beyond. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Dirk was, uh, is on my last EP, uh, uh no, uh, my last single, Fuel the Fire, which, yeah. which is also the name of the, the EP that, uh, that captures all the four songs, uh, uh, in my, in my new uh, one man band or what, what I should call it. Uh, so, uh, Dirk, uh, is a fabulous guy, plays in, uh, uh, in Megadeth, uh, at the moment. Uh, which he has, he has also played in bands such as Soilwork. And, yeah. uh, yeah, he's uh, just a phenomenal guy, uh, and, uh, and do a lot of things. Um, and, uh, to collaborate with him on, uh, the latest single was an absolute pleasure. And he, 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 he made the drums so well. And he basically changed the entire song, uh, yeah. uh by playing the drums, uh, yeah. from what, what I had in mind before delivering it to him. Great track. And how much more spotlight on the band did these guest appearances give you? You know, more, have you had more traction towards your plays on Spotify? And have you noticed any difference on, say, your sh- socials and stuff? Yeah, it, it uh, had an impact on uh, basically everything. Uh, but, you know, guests alone, uh, no matter how big the names are, uh, oh. w- won't do everything no. for you. You have sure. to do all the promotion and you have to you know yeah. uh, they, they may yeah of course i think uh, uh some of the uh press uh, writings and all of that uh, might have not been without those names yeah uh, so sure they have done something in the promotion bit uh, for f- you know a little bit for free for me but yeah. um yeah but it, it, it hasn't <laughs> in the end of the day it's all up to me how well this will go uh sure. no matter what kind of guests i have well that's interesting because i was going to say do you prefer to be a one-man project now no one to have to run ideas by or do you miss the banter and collective ideas that a band brings yeah uh, both uh i i um, do enjoy how things are now uh because uh the writing and the songs and all the creative stuff it's all up to me again. I can do everything I want to do. And, uh, there's no, because <laughs> if you are more people in a band, you kind of expect something from everyone. Yeah. And if one person or two person are not on the, on the same, uh, have Wait, the same opinion. Yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah. That kind of, uh, put breaks on everything. Mm. Uh, even though you might be the person that will do everything in the end. Uh, eventually if you have people not uh, that motivated as you they it will kind of break up or, or put breaks on thing and we say uh, we say if they're not pulling their weight do you know that saying if they're not pulling yeah. weight that's the same that's what we say in, in an english term if yeah. they're not doing whatever if someone else is doing all the work you know 
Yeah, that's true. So uh, you can say uh, as a one-man uh, band, I have to do it either way, but not the, uh, now I don't have to, you know, like be annoyed of <laughs> not yeah. of having people not doing all all the dirt, uh, some of the dirt work and uh, sure. and that's that's some of the some of the positives but the, it's also equal negatives with it i believe sure. is, i can't play live shows and uh, or i can do it but i can ca- kind of organize a live banner and stuff but that's a hard, hard that's also very much work so yeah of yeah of course do you ever think you'll have a full band again or do you think you'll ever go back into that or are you you're happy where you are right now I think uh, in uh, some time I will be in a full band again. Yeah, right. uh, I'm Tonic Breed might be my, uh, you know, my little, uh, uh, my little experimental band I have on the side, making songs in the thrash metal yep. uh, area. That yeah, uh, when I have those ideas, I put it out there. But uh, uh, I am I'm very motivated to. Uh, go into a band again and play live shows, but um, maybe not with Tony Green. Um, That's interesting. That's interesting. So, okay. So what, what, what other forms of, what other genres of metal would you consider? Is it always going to be thrash or being from Norway? Would you ever go heavier? You know? Uh, I, I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if I would go heavier. Maybe, maybe, um, time will show. I think, uh, I, as long as, uh, as it is, um, fun to play live. I could play uh, a lot of things, but yeah, I will, I will stay in the rock genre. That's for sure. Uh, but, uh, uh, we'll see what I will end up doing. I understand. So are you one of those guys that is always writing and demoing or do you have to pick random times to get things down when you feel inspired? You know, what inspires you? What, what gets you, what gets your juices flowing? Shall we say? Uh, for writing music in Tonic Breed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that depends. Sometimes I, I have my uh, uh, pauses of writing. Uh, I can go months without writing anything because, yeah, as you said, the inspiration uh, is not there. Uh, but suddenly, I can get—I can just li- listen to a song and, like, hey, <laughs> it's time to write again. Now I can write a song in you know a couple in just a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, kind of on and off uh, for me, uh, both uh, lyrics and uh, music writing. So mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you first get into like metal? You know, Norway is pretty important to the metal scene for the black metal, which I love as well. So did that have any influence on you? What, what were you, what got you, what got you started? <laughs> yeah, you can't hide from metal here. You kind of, uh, it's, uh, I believe that's in Scandinavia in general. Uh, yeah. it's yeah. metal. It's, it's not on the mainstream radio. You want to hear metal here on the mainstream radio, basically. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's all over in the culture. Uh, but, uh, yeah, here I think, uh, the black metal and all that, sure, you, you, you find it, uh, here and there. Uh, but what got me into metal was, it was the American thrash. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not that uh, Norwegian there. I, <laughs> it was American, American music and, and the, and the, and the English and yeah, all the, the heavy stuff. That's not actually not that, uh, common to hear from bands in Norway that mm-hmm. got me into music. So, like bands like who? Give us an example. The, uh, yeah. the obvious ones. The obvious ones. Yeah, I can say the Bay Area thrash bands uh, from yeah. uh, from the eighties, of course. Uh, but and, and then uh, the early metal bands uh, from from Great Britain. Uh, you you want names? Yeah. I can say Black Sabbath. I yeah, can of say course. Not Motorhead, yeah, yeah, Slayer, yeah, yeah. Metallica. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Megadeth. Yeah, I can I can name drop uh, for hours. But yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. What music yeah. do you like away from metal? What kind of music? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can listen to. Pretty much, uh, it's quite a bold statement to say I can listen yeah. to everything. I can't listen to everything. It's it's in the genres I can't listen to. But uh, I can uh, I can enjoy jazz. I can enjoy uh, classical music, uh, classic rock. Uh, I can I can like I can listen to hip hop if it's a great song. I'm I'm not that picky on it. Not I sure. can uh, yeah. So good music. And, and good I got, music. Yeah, good music is good music. Uh, I don't like to be a DJ at the party. I just no. want to because I prefer my music. And I at the party, I like to uh, other people to show me their music so yeah. I can get exposed to music I wouldn't I normally listen to. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Now yeah. we just mentioned earlier off off uh, off air, should we say that I love Norway, but those drinking laws really annoy me. How do you prepare your weekend knowing you'll get doorman grilling you before you enter a bar and t- and the government telling you when you can buy your drinks for consumption at home? You know, when I was in Norway a few weeks ago, Auntie had a drink and I was being questioned by doorman just to try and get into a pub. Is this normal? 
<laughs> you was uh, uh, because they think you were too drunk or something. Yeah, and I, I, I was I was sober. I didn't had a drink, and they were like questioning me. Like I was like they were like looking my eyes, looking my eyes, and like what's going on? I didn't. I don't wanted a beer. Ah, yeah, yeah, I've, uh, yeah. That's how they are sometimes, and especially if you're a man, uh, <laughs> they, yeah. they want more. Women. Yeah, I don't know what what it is, but uh, yeah, they. Yeah, it's an um, it's not uh, every uh, pub or uh, club you can get into uh, always, and you can be sober. So they all it's kind of if they have this decided Very before choosy. you arrive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't like the look of me. They don't let. Yeah, me in. yeah, yeah. That's that's all that uh, that uh, they need. So <laughs> yeah, sure. So what's yeah. the metal scene like in Norway these days? And also, when I was there a few weeks ago, I didn't get a chance to see any show. But went to a couple of rock bars, which are pretty cool. Is it a close knit uh, community, or is it quite widespread? as everyone keep themselves themselves? Yeah, I don't have an official numbers on this, but I've I've been in the music industry for a while. In uh, you know the uh, uh, underground, uh, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but in as I have uh, no experience, is that the scenes are getting fewer, mm-hmm. and especially the smaller scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. Before, we, when I started to play in the mid two thousands, yeah. it was a lot to choose from. But uh, for smaller bands and less known known bands, uh, today it's fewer, I believe. Uh, and the scenes that's left are the large ones or the medium ones that uh, smaller or new bands uh, mm-hmm. can play on, and uh, they always cost money to rent. Yeah, you you can't play there for free, so it's mm. a huge risk for a smaller band to rent the hu- uh, the, the medium stages yeah. uh, or the scenes. So, uh, but the community is there still. And uh, Tons of Rock was uh, recently. I was there for three days. Yeah, uh, uh, the the largest festival in Norway. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's the culture here is is. Uh, la- uh, large for sure uh, when when the largest festival in the country is a metal festival of course yeah that, of course. that's that says everything that says everything this says everything yeah. absolutely yeah. so talking about shows you know i mean you obviously you like playing live you know what have you done recently have you done anything post pandemic are you looking forward to getting back on stage or will that be another outfit completely or will you take tonic breed to the stage I uh, am I am in a writing process now uh, with a lot of ideas uh, and uh, have a couple of guests. Uh, in, I'm in touch with a couple of new guests. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna uh, who I'm gonna uh, write or do music with yet. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, a lot in the loop, uh, both with Tonic Breed and I have a couple of side projects that might turn into something, but I don't know and uh, know yet. So. Uh, I'm a, in this vacuum right now uh, where I don't know what will be my priority in uh, mm. half a year or, and, and beyond. So uh, I have, just have to take one day at a time and uh, not stop with the creativity. Just keep it rolling and okay. uh, hope that they will turn out to something eventually. Well, do, you, do you prefer the writing process over, say, the live process? I would say, I would say stage. Uh, but uh, I really enjoy uh, releasing the music. You know, that's a uh, that's a, a really good feeling to really to have the music put out there. But the process m- may sometimes be very tedious. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the whole writing process and the studio process, uh, I would prefer live show over that. But mm-hmm. the, the release and have the music out there for people to listen to. That will that will be equal, you know. So yeah. if I can just just have skip all the recording things and, and have yeah. the music there, I would uh, say equal. But if you, I have to put uh, the entire process uh, against uh, or up to live shows, I would say live shows. Okay, here's one for you. You might you might struggle with this answer. <laughs> if you could perform, if you could have performed on any album throughout history, which album would you have performed on? <laughs> Uh, if I would have my name on it, uh, anything. So what you're asking me is what my favorite album of all time is. Okay, we can phrase it like that. Go for it. <laughs> it sounds like you're you're asking me that in a <laughs> creative way. Um, well, I'm gonna be um, so standard in my answer now and say Master of Puppets. Oh, of mate, I know I it. absolutely. Um, okay, what do you think is the latest Metallica stuff? What, what are you thinking of that? Uh, yeah, I'm. 
it's okay. Uh, I've listened to it all. Uh, it's not that re reasonable listenable as the old stuff. Um, mm, of course. Uh, I would say it's uh, it's it's metal. It's okay. Uh, He's a grower, not I, a shower. I think for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe I have to give. It took it me a few listens. listens. It took me many listens to get into, it and I forced myself when I was at the gym. Just keep going, keep going. I was like, one day the light went on. I thought, oh, that's actually quite good. You know. Yeah, and now we're a fan. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, the yeah, first okay. half of the album, definitely. And then this, it seems to. It's, it's, I don't think there's a lot of texture on the album, and it needed a bit mm. more texture. But mm. I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it more now than I did say back in April when it first came out. But yeah, I, well, I have to give it a few more listens. I think then, you should. I think. I think you should. Yeah. <laughs> so, with it being so, um, shall we say, in the media at the moment, uh, have you seen Barbie or Oppenheimer yet? And are you going to go and see them? Um, Oppenheimer, I've uh, uh, considered that I, I, I will watch that. Barbie, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I was, I, I did. I've done. I've done both. Right. I've done both. I went to see okay. Oppenheimer last week. Uh, well, uh, no, this week. Early this week. It was absolutely brilliant. Jaw droppingly brilliant. Absolutely out of this world. And then I was for, I was kind of forced my hand to go to Barbie. And um, yeah, well, yeah, it's which, it's for some. Which did you like? The, which which did you like the best? The, obviously, Oppenheimer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Although Margot Robbie's hot, so uh, what can you uh, say? You know, I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, what's next for Tonic Breed? You said you're writing now. What's the prognosis? When are you going to start dropping some new stuff? Is it? Are we talking the end of this year? Maybe next year? I would say realistically, I would uh, release something next year. Uh, but if I'm in uh, the re- in a really creative mood uh, and and have my gears on, and yeah, I might release something this year. So yeah, I, I wish I could give you you know like a date or something. Uh, no, sure. w- but I don't have anything right now. Oh, well, you think we're in the, we're we're into August nearly? You know what I mean? It's like we're in the eighth month of the year. I mean, it's it's running right. It's running away. We'll be your Halloween soon. You know? Yeah, 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 I know. So I, <laughs> it's unrealistic to say this year, I think, uh, and I don't want to release it in, in the Christmas holidays. So, no, sure, uh, yeah, sure. I think, sure. I think, uh, you know, I think uh, 2024 will be uh, the realistic answer here. Sure. Awesome. Well, f- thanks, Patrick, for the chat. Keep in touch. Make sure you send me loads of tracks when you uh, when you start getting them and we'll get them on the show and I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds for you. Uh, thank you for inviting me.